Dear Professor, uh, now I know it's, uh, it's getting late. I will try to be as uh, short as possible. When I got the invitation to take part of this uh, interesting meeting, I, I saw the program, I saw the participants, I set myself uh, to uh, give you a complex and a successful case. It will be difficult. It will not, I will not get interested in that. So I said to myself, what about a simple case, but with a very bad outcome, eventually? So simple case. 76 years old, uh, autic stenosis, symptomatic, uh, a lot of uh, other problems, post uh, cabbage, uh, chronic uh, kidney failure. Uh, STS score was high, uh, US score 13.6, so obvious. It's a, it's a tower. Standard procedures, we did it last, uh, last year in June. Uh, an Evolute Pro 29, femoral access went well, not, not a single problem. A couple of days after the procedure, we let it go. Let, uh, we let the patient go. He came back, ten, 10 days out of discharge. Pulmonary edema, fever, anemia. Tava looked okay on the ego, but uh, blood culture was positive for enterococcus fecale. So we started in on, on uh, antibiotherapy. Anti Couple of weeks, he stabilized, everything came back to normal. We let him, let him go. Again, four days after procedures, after the uh, second discharge. Same story again. Start, uh, the valve looked good. Again, blood culture were, were, were positive. This time it was six weeks of antibiotics until we stabilized the patient. And, uh, well, Third, third time's a charm, I say. Blood culture was positive, came back again. The echo was not that normal at that time, so I'm gonna show the echo. Guess for yourself. We repeated two weeks after. More obvious than that, it's evident. So the patient died, died a couple of days after a cerebral uh, embolic event. Pretty, pretty obvious. Now, since uh, 2002 that we have started to, to implant TAVIS, we are becoming very good in solving technical issues. Kind of uh, access. We're going lower and more hydrophilic and everything. We do several cerebral protection. We're good with uh, power valvular leaks. We can implant in small valvular sizes. We know how to treat an AV block. We can prevent it. We do commissure alignment. We have larger cells for future access of the coronaries. We do wonders. We, we, we even put valve in a pure AR. Sizing is not a problem. Some companies have up to 10 different sizes and uh, cost availability, that's not a problem either. I mean, you can see the equivalent of uh, Edwards. It's uh, the MyVal from India, and you can see the other equivalent of uh, Metronic is the Venus from, from China. You do have everything. We, are adopt we have adapted to fix technical complication. We are adapted with a, a technical advances. Now, just, just, just to show you, just to prove you that, is that it's a three-year-old, my, 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 ne my nephew. He did all that in less than one minute. The technicality is not a problem for us. The advances, that's, that, these, are, these are not a problem. However, endocarditis still remains a problem. It was a problem, it still is a problem. Same mortality after, as the uh, standard surgery, but at least three times more, uh, more frequent after TAVA than after standard surgery. And that's one of the points why we cannot uh, implant TAVAs in young uh, patients with low surgical risk. That's po the, 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 the single point that surgeons are, are holding us, uh, where they are not allowing us to, 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 put, to implant TAVAs in those uh, patients. Uh, second problem, we have more and more resistant bacteria. So, in my humble opinion, the endocarditis will be our next challenge, not the technical one. Thanks for the attention. Keep it short. Thank you, excellent. No one of us want to be in your position. <laughs> uh, and actually, we have no, no solution for that. The Professor Davluros, any comments? You are uh, muted. Is... No, I'm not. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 
Good evening to everybody. Thank you for the kind invitation. It was a very interesting case and indeed this is going to be a challenge in the future. Um, although I have to comment that uh, we all know, all of us are interventional cardiologists and our colleagues, arrhythmiologists as well, uh, know that uh, infections in the perioperative uh, 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 area, time area, time frame, um, are related uh, to the uh, invasive procedure itself. So what we need to do at the moment is to be very careful, sterilize the, um, uh, the cath lab and uh, of course be very careful with uh, vena punctures, with uh, the insertion of uh, sheaths for temporary pacemakers and uh, do uh, the least invasive um, uh, procedures apart from uh, apart from the main procedure, the TAVI, the least invasive procedure we can do. Uh, for example, in our center, we try to um, uh, uh, pace during the uh, implantation of uh, of TAVI through the wire, through the guide wire, uh, and avoiding inserting a, a vena sheath in the jugular vein or in the femoral vein, etc. Um, the second issue is that, uh, and it was beautifully shown, is that we have a um, resistance to the antibiotics and I hope our colleagues, um, the uh, in, uh, infectious disease doctors, are going to be uh, helpful in um, providing new therapies for uh, resistant uh, uh, microbes that uh, uh, unfortunately are very common in large hospitals. Let's hope so. Right. Any other comments? Uh, do you find any source for the enterococcus, I think? No, we don't know. Uh, it's not the first case. It's the third case we've had in three different patients, three different centers that arrived. Uh, the, the issue, in my opinion, if I may, we, we're considering TAVA as a non-invasive, a very uh, less invasive procedure considered to, to open house surgery. And we, we are low in our guard sometimes. So it's time to, to consider it. It can be a risk. It can be dangerous because it's a conundrum to, to te te tell the patient, we put in your TAVI for not but to avoid your surgery and then you have an endocarditis, you have to go back to surgery, it doesn't really make sense. Do you use, in any case, uh, antibiotic prophylaxis before yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, and of after course. that? Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Hisok yes. They said, uh, we see occasionally endocarditis, and indeed it's a very difficult uh, uh, situation. Thankfully, uh, we've been able to, uh, in three, two or three cases that we've had with antibiotics, they, they, they were, uh, corrected. Uh, do you think uh, the mentality of the interventional cardiologist compared to the surgeon is a bit uh, different uh, in terms of uh, antisepsis and uh, prevention? Because, you know, the surgeons are very strict with their uh, uh, antisepsis and everything else. Do you think it's a matter of... Um, uh, All right. Uh, uh, fair, fair, uh, excellent, excellent point. I mean, I, I remember when I started my, my, my internship in uh, to year 2000, more or less, that the surgeons, before starting a surgery, before, uh, sending a patient surgery, uh, they were not that concerned about uh, anesthesia, anesthesia or things like that. They were concerned for the patient to go to the dentist to fix everything, to go to uh, a doctor, to, to, to look for entry points. So at the time, they were very extremely serious. The patient did, didn't, had no chance to go to the operation room without uh, solving every possible uh, point of entry for infection. Now, we're considering the patient kind of, uh, our procedure are considered kind of not, not that invasive, but a valve is a valve. So we, we are low in our guard. That's what I'm trying to say, very probably. So shame on us. Any other question? If not, uh, just a, a last reminder that in the carditis, uh, instructions for prophylaxis before uh, TAVI, we have to check for Staphylococcus uh, and t treatment before implant. Uh, yeah. but in this case, it was not Staphylococcus. No, it was Enterococcus, but. Okay. Right. Thank you very much for the presentation, you. and we move.